Bolton's strategy for returning to the Premiership includes the cunning plan of wearing the same colours as the referee. It worked against Port Vale's defenders, they hesitated, Alan Thompson swept through, Bolton in front after 23 minutes. To be honest though, Bolton didn't need an extra man, they were comfortably the better side. That is until 18 minutes from the end. A deflection off the man in black, not the ref, but a Bolton defender, Tony Naylor, scored for Port Vale. Port Vale won, Bolton Wanderers won is how it finished. Swindon, the new kids on the first division block, looked a little lost against the old hands of Port Vale. Town were shaky, nervy, Vale strong and confident, and unlucky not to be two or three up by half time. They had to settle for just the one, but any team would settle for a strike like this from John McCarthy. Second half turned upside down and inside out as Swindon got to grips with things and turned Vale over with an equaliser from Mark Robinson. Swindon won, Port Vale won. Port Vale's two draws in Division 1 have now been overshadowed by one defeat. It came at Tranmere who went ahead through Alan Marne as Vale overcame a half-hearted handball appeal and then succumbed to an inability to clear. Tranmere doubled their advantage before half-time thanks to an impressive effort from Graham Branch. So Vale go into Saturday's match with Oxford still seeking their first win of the season. So Mike Ford will take this free kick. Elliott has been posted forward to add his thread in the air alongside Paul Moody. Didn't get his head to it though, but here's Moody now. Turning well, good effort two from Moody! Scramble away for the corner by Alian Van Houston. And he's very dangerous in front of goal. A really belligerent and forceful striker, Paul Moody. And he brought the best there out of the Dutch goalkeeper, Van Houston. Moody with 24 goals last season. Will it be his right or Beecham's left? It's Beecham. It's taken a deflection. Somehow it squirmed just past the post. That Houston managing to divert the ball at the last moment then when he was committed the other way. Superb reactions then from the Dutch goalkeeper. Aspin. Naylor in front of him. He's kept going again, Aspin. Isn't really going anywhere. McCarthy though able to swing over the cross towards Martin Foyle. Then Naylor turning down for the shot delivers sweetly into the corner, Tony Naylor. Five minutes for the first half remaining, and Port Vale have the lead. Bogey and McCarthy between them getting in a bit of a tangle, but they've got away with it. Here's McCarthy now. And a strike at goal, which was not far away. Just put in the opening then, John McCarthy. Mills waiting in the middle, this is Bogey. Played in towards McCarthy, and here is Mills now with his first chance, and he's put it wide. This is Guppy now, Mills in the centre, so too was Porter, in fact they've got four in there now. Tanker supplying the cross this time, mistake by Ford, and it's a goal for Mills, Lee Mills. Gilchrist, too casual really, Mills now through the centre, Mills with a chance. Well, he's got one goal, we better finish him, he might have had a hat-trick. Going to Gresty Road with a 1-0 lead to defend, Port Vale were by no means favourites. And when Cruz Nigerian striker Deli Adebola equalised, a grim night threatened. But an astonishing reversal of fortune, started ten minutes later by Ian Bogey, saw John Rudge's team seize total control. John McCarthy made it 3-1 on aggregate after his snapshot surprised the crew keeper. The home side could find no way back in the second half and three goals in the last 15 minutes finished them off, the first of them from Martin Foyle. Tony Naylor stretched the advantage to 5-1 draws in nine. They took the lead through Steve Guppy.
They got their second courtesy of Tony Naylor. This after Andy Porter had beaten goalkeeper Jürgen Sommer to set up the simplest of chances. Queen's Park Rangers booed off at half and full time, did score through a splendid Simon Barker effort, but it wasn't enough to stop Port Vale from taking all three points. Perhaps only for this afternoon. ...decided the outcome of the Potteries derby. Stoke City had stolen a lead through a rare Kevin Keane header. But with time almost up, Lee Mills, Lee Mills equalised three minutes into injury time for Port Vale. A climb by Crow. Now ball using his strength to hold off Jack Cook. Well, there's no shortage of desire from Steve Ball this afternoon. Again, good work by Crow. On the luck of the bounce there, Steve Ball, his shoulder. And that wasn't far away. Steve Ball with six goals this season. He's the only man in the starting lineup this afternoon who scored for Wolves so far in this campaign. Mark McGee's message to the fans is just wait till all our players are fit again and we'll be top of the league. That's how confident he is. Here's Crow. Well, he held it up tidily but was so eagerly closed out by Andy Porter. This is McCarthy. Two in the middle. Taking on James Smith. And it's off him for the corner. So a spirited repast here from Port Vale. Walker with the corner kick. Young didn't make it, Stahl just about did, but punched his own defender, it's driven through and only just wide from Andy Porter. Venus it is who's down, and it was the fist of Mike Stahl that made contact with him. Oh, right in the back of the head from the goalkeeper. Nothing was going to, well, nobody was going to get in his way there. Well, Bill Bell says he will stay on as chairman if no suitable bid for the club is made. He's retracted his threat to close them down. Dubé, nice change of pace then. Foley setting off through the centre. His first touch is a good one. Phil Foley. Dubé, beaten away by Musselwhite. Excellent approach by them for Wolves. In the end, the chance falling to Jens Dubé. And it needed a smart piece of goalkeeping to deny him from Paul Musselwhite. But it's Paul Vale on the break with Guppy. Lovely change of pace that. Now Walker. McCarthy drifting out wide, it's opened up some space, and this is Scuppy, and in for Naylor! <laughs> Superb build-up there from Port Vale, and Tony Naylor, their leading goal scorer, in on the finish. 20 minutes into the second half, and it was a move that deserved a goal. Guppy unselfishly into the middle, and Naylor was in the right place. Great ball there from Walker. It all started from a fine run out of defence by Guppy, and he was the man who supplied the cross for Naylor to tuck away. Well found there by Walker. And a really intelligent cross in by Guppy. Mark McGee will find this hard to digest. But getting results away from Molyneux, but at home, well, it's just one Disappointment after another. Back in by Tankard. This is Porter on for Guppy. McCarthy at the far post! And might have done better. He ghosted into space there. John McCarthy. Wolves marking all over the place. 
Again, some intelligent approach play from Fort Vale. And look at the room he had there. And with Stadia finishing, it could have been a second goal for Port Vale. Taken up by Robbie Dennison. He's got Pierce outside it. Still Dennison. Good efforts. And at least it brought a save out of Port Musselwhite. And we haven't been able to say that too often today. Good little run by Robbie Dennison but you always felt the keeper had it covered. On with a 1-0 win at Huddersfield. John McCarthy scored the winner. Recent talks of takeovers seem to have sparked Vale into impressive life. Laid off by Holland. Good movement here from Birmingham. This is Devlin. It goes Furlong. And it's squirmed just past the post. Good break then by Birmingham. Devlin with the pass. And Furlong almost made something of it. General Francis, whose team just can't get it right on their travels. is Tackard to swing over the cross and Mills well he hasn't started all that often Lee Mills for Port Vale this season but he's got four goals three of them as a substitute in from the start this time and making a strong early impression Devlin now Tackard Guppy outmaneuvered by Gary Breen Really does look an outstanding prospect, Gary Breen. That's one of those three central defenders for Birmingham. This is Naylor! What a super strike by Tony Naylor. That's a cracking goal. There seemed to be no danger. But it was a stacking shot right into the corner beyond Ian Bennett. Tanker who played it in here. Naylor spinning round and whipping his shot beyond the goalkeeper. Halfway through the first half, Port Vale in front. And a memorable strike from Tony Naylor, Port Vale's leading goal scorer, with his eighth of the season. And he will cherish that one. Really was a marvellous finish. It's Barry Horn to Devlin. Jackson, though, got the other way. Here's Porter. To Hill. Now McCarthy. Mills is in the middle. There is Mills! And Naylor! 2-0. Well, Mills was unlucky not to score himself. But the master poacher, Tony Naylor, was in the right place to stab in the rebound. Good cross in by McCarthy. Mills climbing high. And there was no answer there from Birmingham to Tony Naylor. Mills flicking his header on. Bennett could only look on there, the goalkeeper. Couldn't get back in time. developing into another difficult afternoon for Trevor Francis. He says he can't put his finger as to why they aren't playing so well away as they do at home. He says we don't approach the games any differently. A solid challenge by Porter. Referee waving play on. McCarthy. Brought down by Lane. Well, he was heading off towards goal. Andy Lane is being spoken to by referee Allison. And I wonder, is that going to be the first caution of the game? It's Guppy's free kick. At the header back towards Naylor. And then Lake to hack it away. Here's Bowen. 
Holland, off goes Bowen again, he's outside this time, Devlin at the far post, Bowen with the cross, beyond Devlin, who was looking to attack it. And it wasn't where he wanted it. The sudden break then by Birmingham. Bowen with time to look up. And Devlin couldn't get a finish on it. He'll be satisfied with the way it's going at the moment, John Ranch. Especially with his team having this pretty awful home record. Porter. Layla, good touch. Porter's cross. It's another one. Guppy! 3-0, just past the halfway point in the second half. And again, Birmingham's defence was found wanting. Really stretched here by some excellent approach play for Port Vale and a very decisive finish from Steve Guppy. Porter, who supplied the cross from Naylor's initial touch, and Cappy had sneaked in to steer his shot past Ian Bennett. Good football from Port Vale. Shifts it off by Mills to Naylor, and he showed too much of it to Michael Johnson. Here's Walker. Good work by Guppy. And then Mills. Surprisingly close from Lee Mills, who deserves a goal for his charging up front today. Really has worked hard. And he scooped it only just wide. Almost scraped the post. Dealt with by Porter, but then Burgess and knock it back again. Bale struggling to clear. Burgess with the shot. Then Taylor spun away from the keeper. Rose following in, couldn't take advantage. Bob Taylor really sharp then. And the reflexes of Paul Musselwhite came to Port Vale's rescue. Smart goalkeeping by Musselwhite. Got his body in the way, and Groves just rather snatched at the ball that rebounded to him. It was good policing. Talbot, but now he's got out of position. In goes Taylor! Just couldn't finish it off. Again, he was very alert, then very sharp, Bob Taylor. Fine pass in by Janssen to release Naylor. It's a swift counter thrust from Port Vale. McCarthy, four in the box, in goes Naylor, and Guppy to drive it in! Well, they sprung so quickly then from defence to attack. And Albion were caught cold. Steve Guppy, who nearly didn't play today because of his back problem, has pounced for the lead via the upright. Albion came so close to scoring at the other end through Bob Taylor, but now they find themselves a goal down. Now it's Glover for Port Vale. Jansen, who's made a very impressive start. There's the Swedish international again. Talbot spreading the play intelligently to find McCarthy. More danger brewing here. Andy Hill now supporting down the right flank. Guppy had the call in from Jansen. Guppy again. Played in for Tankard. Tankard shot. And I think it was a shot rather than a cross. In fact, the flag was up anyway, so it wouldn't have counted. But again, it was... An excellent piece of attacking play then from Port Vale on the break. Alan Buckley off his seat, prancing up and down the touchline, urging his team on. Now the home fans beginning to lift their team a little. They have been fairly quiet so far. Then there hasn't been too much for them to get excited about. Donovan. Pesky Solido, you feel he carries the major threat. Donovan, it's a decent cross, but just too close to the keeper. Oh, but he lost it! And Taylor was lurking to pass. 
Well, it has to go down as a goalkeeping error. Muscle White, who's looking disgusted with himself. But the ever alert Bob Taylor was in the right spot, in the right place. Well, look, I don't think he even knew it had bounced into his path until he turned round. Donovan's cross, it seemed a routine save for the goalkeeper. But it spilled away from him as he clashed with his own defender there. Dean Glover and Taylor was there. 1-1. One, one. one by Yatza. Hill away down the right again. Naylor's in the middle. And quite the goal to hold on. Had he not done so, that surely would have been a second goal with Naylor hovering just behind him. Hill with time to look up and hope then to pick him out. Now Snakers. Janssen's layoff to Talbot. Off goes Naylor. Naylor shot. Off the post. Very unlucky there. He kept his nerve to the last moment. He was clattered as he delivered his strike for goal. And he came so close then to shattering Albion's prospects again. Great ball through the middle. And he was sent flying just as he beat Crichton with the shot. Anxious looks from the bench to see if he's OK or not. John Rudge down on the bench for the second half. He'll have been very unhappy, I'm sure, at the way the equaliser was conceded. Griffiths to challenge for it, then Talbot. Talbot shots! Good save. The works then from Crichton. Griffiths on the near post, chipped in by Guppy, but not to good effect. Glover, Guppy again. Good move, Guppy's shot. Yatsen with Porter. Now Groves for Albion. Hasn't really stamped his authority on the game, Groves. Rather been on the periphery of things. But that was a good block there. Hill to clear. Esky Solido. Looking to embarrass Griffiths. Did he hold him back? The referee shakes his head. No penalty. But he was living dangerously then. Now, was he pulled back here? It looks like a tug on the shirt to me. I wish it was your... Manager John Rudge says Charlton can be formidable at home and when Phil Chappell headed them into the lead after 21 minutes, you can see he had a point. But Vale are a resilient lot and Tony Naylor turns his man brilliantly here after 33 minutes and sets off on a run which he was confident had only one outcome. A minute into the second half, Naylor was there again. And the celebrations were as cool as the finish. Vale 2-1 up. Naylor by this time was convinced everything he touched would go into the net. And with 49 minutes gone, he had his hat trick. From a goal down, Vale were 3-1 up and taking all three points. One defeat by West Brom in the week as a shambles. He was searching for more adjectives when Andy Porter gave Port Vale a seventh-minute lead. And even though Tony Naylor, who scored a hat 
hat-trick last week had to go off, Norwich were not to be spared. Stuart Talbot made it 2-0 a couple of minutes before half-time. Norwich looking as shambles as Walker said at the back and the second half was barely two minutes old when Naylor's replacement, Martin Foyle, nodded in number three. Naylor must have been cursing his luck. On this evidence, he would have had a field day. Instead, that was left to his teammates to enjoy. Talbot's second was the best of the four Vale had scored. So much for Vale manager John Rudge's pre-match assertion that Norwich couldn't play as badly as they did against West Brom. Oh yes they could, Lee Mills hit the fifth. Vale had now scored eight in two games, Norwich had let in ten. Norwich may be known as the Canaries, but today they look like a rather more festively appropriate bird, a turkey, and a stuffed one at that, especially when Foyle scored his second. Right from the kickoff, Robert Fleck made the final score, Port Vale six, Norwich City one. Keeper. Glover's gone up to Sandy Hill trying to force it back to Mills. Terrific save by Patterson. To deny Lee Mills what would have been a spectacular goal. Fantastic reaction save then from Andy Patterson. Support from McCarthy. Away from Robinson, that's a good ball too for Mills. That's a terrific goal. McCarthy with the cross, and such a decisive finish from Lee Mills. His eighth of the season. Lucas stepping forward to Outwick Porter. Shouting playing themselves out of trouble here. Rufus, who turned back into trouble. Lee Mills for the great chance to make it two! Atrocious work by Charlton, who seem to have got themselves out of bother. And their dithering has proved so costly. Lee Mills claims his second of the game, and it was very coolly taken too. Ian Bogey. This is Naylor. Wiggle through is too. Good effort. Just tipped over by Pedersen. Nobody's taking Port Vale's pursuit of the Premier League too seriously. And that could be their secret weapon. No team is playing with more confidence or freedom. And Lee Mills personifies it. Mills' seventh goal in six games upset Oxford. And Mills gave defender Darren Purse such a torrid time, Purse was eventually provoked into one of the most blatant red card offences of the season. Mills went down, he hobbled off. Purse, not surprisingly, was sent off. Mills' replacement, Tony Naylor, guaranteed another win towards the finish. More bad news for Oxford. Work on their new stadium is delayed and they might not be able to move in this summer. Lightport Vale to join them. Tony Naylor put them ahead against Oldham, whose own battle is with those at the bottom. 
Sean Garnett equalised right on half-time, but then Lee Mills put Vale back in front with yet another goal to extend his incredible run of form this season, the type of goal only those brimming with confidence and total self-belief would even attempt to score. A second Oldham equaliser of the afternoon from Lee Duxbury might have staunched the enthusiasm of many a Vale side of the past, especially with just eight minutes left, but this year's lineup is showing a Wimbledon-esque fighting spirit with a fair amount of style thrown in for good measure. Naylor earned victory, a reasonable prelude this to next week's Potteries derby, especially with Stokes' defeat at Norwich just about ending their chances of an extended season. It is Ferguson. Ball four to Corica. And Thomas has beaten the offside trap. What a great run. He's got ball by the side of him. And Musselwhite has scrambled a very important save. Well, Paul Bell's hopes were almost shattered by Steve Ball in the opening minutes. Osborne, it's a good ball through to Ball. Aspin's made the tackle. Ball's down on the ground and suddenly McGee thinks that that should be a penalty. But when the tackle came in from Aspin, it was certainly from behind. And the rules say that should be a penalty. And you can see what McGee's reaction was. Osborne with the corner. Musselwhite's off his line. Thomas has reacted quickly. And Wolves are ahead. And what a crucial goal that could be, especially for Paul Vale on their hopes of making the playoffs. Indecision in the defence. Musselwhite off his line, failing to collect. And Thomas did the job. Mills to Naylor. The shot is almost slow motion and only just wide. It's been such a live wire this season. How important could that be to him? Paul Vell have really struggled to break down Wolves. They're now trying down the left flank. Here's Tankard. Naylor. He's got it in. A quite brilliant goal by Naylor. His 20th of the season. Paul Vell back on level terms. Inspirational work by Naylor again. In all truth, the ball in from Tankard wasn't the best. But Naylor did brilliantly with it. It's one all, and Rudge is delighted. Here's Atkins. No one's closing him down. He's gone for the shot. Oh, my word, it's in. What a blow for Port Vale again, just before half-time. And Atkins scores another crucial goal in the playoff shakedown. No one closed him down. Just allowed to run on. The shot got an awful bounce just before Musselwhite went down for the save. So it'll be Glover with the corner. Oh, it almost went in. Stahl with a save that he had to make. Good effort. But Paul Bell's hopes at the moment are threadbare. Another good overlap by Osborne. He's having a good game since coming on as a substitute. Goes for the deeper cross. There's Thomas to ball and now Crow it's gone in but the flag has gone up almost immediately Crow just offside must have been awfully tight Osborne saw Thomas free it was a good header back Baldo scuffed his shot but Crow reacted so quickly but was just offside Bordell have got to force the pace time is running out Lovo is having such a good game Gets the ball back and goes for the shot. I think Stahl had it covered. It was certainly worth the effort. Well, I've seen Mills score from this sort of range. Did so against Ipswich. He goes for the free kick and Stahl saves again. They've got to go for everything, Paul Vale. A pretty decent effort for Mills. He really does strike them well. The last few seconds of the game, McCarthy cutting inside, Mills again, and Stahl again denies him the chance to score against his former club. He's disappointed, as indeed are the Vale fans, it's a pretty decent effort at goal. And there's the final whistle, the fans applaud their heroes. John Rudge achieved so much with so little, but Vale weren't able to make that final leap into the big time. We can see the 
Some good news for Wolves today from Selhurst Park. Palace went ahead through Andy Roberts, but then watch number 10, Dougie Friedman. A right which the referee saw, most people saw it. Friedman himself saw red and won't see too much gold. He'll be suspended. Mark McGee might also be interested in Palace's rather curious idea of a defensive header. Lee Mills took advantage and finished it off. 1-1, the final score at Selhurst Park.